have your Bibles, let's open those up. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, we're talking about our spiritual toolbox, and I pray that you are learning to use the, the, the skills and the gifts and the blessings God's given you, not to build up your name or to build up your bank account or your life, but for the kingdom, because that's why it was given, right? Jesus said, Matthew 6, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And Paul to the Hebrews said, listen, many of you by now should be teachers of the law, but you're not. You need milk and not solid food. And the reason why, it's by reason of use. You haven't applied what God has given you. And that's the real emphasis behind these studies here, the, the spiritual toolbox, is that you and I are making sure we're applying it. We're reading the word daily. We're praying. If you're not reading the word and praying daily, you're not doing basic Christianity. So whatever's going wrong in your life, stop thinking it's because of that. You need to go back to the basics. And now we're talking this week about the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is a person. He's the third person of the Trinity. God, and in, 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 in he's with us. He's in us. He wants to be upon us for the purposes of serving the Lord. And today we're looking a little bit more at the gifts of the Spirit. You could read chapter 12, 13, and 14 and kind of study and get more acquainted with it. But Paul here says, pursue love, chapter 14, verse 1, and desire spiritual gifts. So love, he had just talked about in chapter 13. Without love, it doesn't matter how much other stuff you do, it's not going to work. Love is the foundation but especially that you may prophesy. Prophecy doesn't mean tell the future. It's not a fortune teller. Let me see your palm, right? It's about foretelling the word of God. It's about speaking forth the word with power and authority, rightly dividing the word of truth. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. When I teach a Bible study here on Wednesday and Sunday, it's not just Bible study, it's prophecy, the gift of the Holy Spirit of prophecy it is upon a pastor uh, to teach the word, not just to do a Bible study. You've probably sat on Bible study, and those are nice, but there's another aspect of God speaking through that. And he, he regularly does. He regularly does. But does not speak to men, but to God, for no one understands him. However, in the spirit, he speaks mystery. But he who speaks prophecy speaks edification and exhortation and comfort to men. So, Paul here, he's helping us understand, listen, speaking in tongues is a gift, and there are two gifts of that. There's the angelic language, and then there is an actual known language. Uh, we see them both practice. In 1 Corinthians 13, Paul says, if I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but have not love, it profits me nothing. So, but, but when you speak in tongues, you're speaking to God. It's not for man, it's for God. When you prophesy, you're speaking to man. You're, you're speaking forth the word. You're evangelizing. You're teaching the word. You're, 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 God is using you as a microphone. And he's saying that's the one that needs to be more in, encouraged in the body of Christ. Verse 4, he who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. He says, I wish you all spoke with tongues, but even more that you prophesied. For he who prophesies is greater than he who speaks with tongues, unless indeed he interprets that the church may receive edification. Now, one of the reasons we have all this information about the gifts of the Spirit, and why didn't Paul write it to the Galatians and the Ephesians and the Philippians? It's because they weren't misusing the gifts of the Spirit. They weren't allowing it to become chaos. And often what we see today practiced in the church as the moving of the Spirit is chaos. Uh, the Bible says, let all things be done decently and in order. In the book of Revelation, we see a spiritual worship service that was orderly. And that doesn't mean, chaos doesn't mean, wow, we're letting the Holy Spirit move here. No, that's not true. You know, uh, that's not true. That's not biblical. Uh, Jesus never functioned that way. So either you're right, and, and Jesus was basically a cessationist. He didn't function in the Spirit. And Paul was a cessationist. That means they, they think the gifts ended with the apostles, right? <laughs> the apostles didn't function in the Spirit like we see a lot of church groups doing today. So that's not accurate. What it is is that we've moved away from the Word. And I'll wrap this week up on this Holy Spirit. You need Him so badly. You need His presence in your life. You need to depend on Him. But there's an old saying. It goes like this. Too much Word and not enough of the Holy Spirit, you'll dry up. You'll just become dead right. Too much spirit and not enough, too much of the Holy Spirit, but not enough of the word, you know, the crazy stuff. You'll blow up. 
but just enough word and just enough of the Holy Spirit, you'll grow up. So use those tools today. Father, bless your people. Holy Spirit, may you flood their lives. May you flood our lives. May you flood our church. May you flood our community, our region, and our world. Holy Spirit, may we see a great move of you in these last days to bring people to Jesus. And Lord, may it start with us being busy about the Father's business. If all we're going to be is a little twinkle light, then that's all the power we need. But God, we want to be those that step out on the water, that, that Lord, challenge Goliath and receive the power to take him down. Challenge the prophets of Baal like Elijah. Father, we want to be those that are busy about your business. Lord, we recognize your word is true. The harvest is plentiful and the workers are few. So Lord, may we be busy about your business so we may receive the power of the Spirit to a greater degree to meet the needs of this day. Lord, to see on this rock you will build your church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. So Lord, may we be those living stones walking in you. In Jesus' name, anoint your people, Holy Spirit, today. Empower them afresh in Jesus' name. Amen.